Former Major League pitcher, former May All Star Scott Gareltz is here. Hey, Mr. Scott, how are you this morning? How are you doing this morning, Robert? Well, we've got lots of questions, both Matt and me, but my first, here's where I want to start with the World Series. Game one, a three to one Dodgers win. Game two, what was it, eight to seven Astros. Two games that on the surface seemingly totally dissimilar. Did you? As a former major leaguer, as a former major league pitcher, watch the game. Did you see any commonality, any common thread between those two games, or did you see what I saw? I uh, actually, I did not watch Game One. I was uh, working with some kids that evening, but uh, I did watch Game Two, and uh, really didn't pick it up until about the ninth inning. So uh, I got to see the most exciting part of uh, of the whole ball game. Is it, you tell me as a former pitcher, is it weird in this case, Justin Verlander, is how, how does it affect a pitcher psychologically when you give up two hits, but both are home runs and you're three runs behind, but you think you got good stuff and in fact you do? Well, I mean, and, and that's the way you have to take it is, you know, you have good stuff, you know, uh, you, you know, you give up two solo home runs and you know, you just have to look at it as, you know, that was the one thing we always talked about uh, when we pitched. You know, the solo home runs won't kill you. It's the three-run homers that, that, that destroy you. But when you, get to and, the, when you get to that game, when you get to the pinnacle of your profession, like Verlander in that case, do you kind of think when you give up a home run or two home runs, even if they're solos, do you kind of go, man, I waited so long and now it's getting away from me? No, no, you're in the moment at that point. You're just you're just worried about that next hitter and just the next pitch and trying to and trying to get the next out and just you know you're basically your job is to keep the ball club in the game and and that's pretty much what he did. I mean you know they struggled scoring runs off hill and you know Roberts took a chance on <clears throat> on uh, Yank and Hill after four innings and because he knew his bullpen was really good. And somehow, some way, you know, they were uh, Astros were able to scratch out a couple runs, and when they uh, scored uh, to tie it up, I mean, that was huge because uh, you know Jansen is has been almost unhittable all year. But I still thought when you know the Astros went up uh, five to three, I thought, well, you know, okay, game's over. And then all of a sudden, when the Dodgers tied it up, I said, there's no way in the world that that uh, the Astros can win this game. But, uh, you know, what, a, what an amazing game. You watch uh, the rest of the way. Who, who who do you think has the advantage if you had to make a bet, if you were going to make a pick? Who would you pick and why? What will be the tipping? Uh, what is going to turn the series one way or, or the other and for whom? Uh, I would say tonight. Tonight's game is probably the key to the whole thing with uh, – with the advantage, the Astros, you lose, you lose uh, this game tonight, and all of a sudden the Dodgers know they can go home and win it. So you know, game tonight is going to be big. Uh, you know, it, and it's you know it, it's going to be hard for the Astros to win three games in a row and it's clear, clear it out. But if they can win two out of three, then you got to go back to uh, L.A. But I still say, you know, I know. Astro fans are probably not going to like it. I still say advantage to the Dodgers right now. Um, Matt and I were talking about home field advantage. Matt and I were talking about this the other day. I I don't like two three and two. I'd prefer two two one 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 because of the pressure. Because three in a row, it's hard for anybody to win three in a row of anything, even on their home field, home diamond, home court, etc. Right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, and you know, and it's just like when they changed the All Star Game up to where the winner of the All Star Game had home field advantage, and you saw for years that it seemed like the American League was winning the All Star Game, and you know what advantage that is to have potential four games at home compared to three. But I also think to the one year that uh, Milky Cabrera for the uh, for the Giants won the MVP award and got the home field advantage for the for the Giants, but then, like, uh, a few weeks later, got nailed for steroids. So here's a player who was doing steroids, got the MVP, got the Giants home field advantage. They go on to win the World Series. And you think, uh, you know, you think back to little things like that, that you go, wow, you know, how the steroid era played in uh, to a World Series. 
Hey, uh, you know, looking at both of these pitching rotations, both starters, bullpen, you got Verlander on one side, you got Clayton Kershaw on the other, and they're just head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, what do those guys do uh, that make them so much better than everyone else? What, what what kind of stuff do they have? What What's the mental process of breaking down batters? What are just some of the things that you see or you can pick up on from your experiences that just make them that good? Well, I mean, it obviously helps that, you know, they're throwing mid to upper 90s, and, but they can throw that fastball on the, on the um, you know, master home play with a the fastball. They can throw it outside. They can throw it inside. They can also throw their breaking balls, you know, when they're behind in the count, and that's, that's always huge, you know, to, so you can kind of uh, don't have to rely on your fastball for everything. But, you know, the biggest thing I see, because there are a lot of guys that, do throw hard. The biggest thing is is what's between your ears. You know they believe in themselves and they believe in in what they're doing, and that's what really to me separates them from a lot of other pitchers. Just like you know, back in the day with the Maddox, the Glavin, you know those those kind of pitchers where when they get on the mound, if you don't get to them early, then and they get settled in, then it's going to be a rough day for the hitters. But you know that's what they do to me more than anything because mechanically they're all different uh they obviously throw hard but to me it's it's when they take the mound they believe they're gonna they're gonna get you out and there's no doubt in their mind and they go out and then the hitter knows that it's almost like it's almost like the pitcher knows it but the hitter also knows it also 